in 1988, when I first came to Brotherhood, I, uh, I had the opportunity, you know, I have work in Germany in the Weber Winery, which mm -hmm. is uh, near Stein in the Rhine Hessen. Mm -hmm. So I, I have seen how they make the ice wine, and there was a big celebration, this thing. And uh, in 1988, when I, after I came uh, back to work in, in Brotherhood, uh, I worked for Pepsi and start and, and my first experience, I wanted to make an, a lake harvest. I never had intention of making ice wine, making lake harvest. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we, we uh, I, I bought some grape from, I talked to a, a grower in uh, upstate New York, uh, uh, Doc Miles, mm -hmm. uh, who is um, a friend of mine that could grow Riesling. And I said to him, uh, look, Doc, we want to make a, a lake harvest mm -hmm. wine. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, he said uh, to me, uh, we are, I, I will do it, but you had to, it's your risk. You buy the grapes on the vine. We calculate how many tons we have. Mm -hmm. That's what you buy. So uh, that's what we did. And so he kept calling me and they say, you know, it's, uh, the sugar with higher and higher and higher. How high was the sugar? And uh, I uh, ran to, we got around 27. 27 yeah. before it froze? Before it froze. Wow, that's quite high. But but I wasn't expecting even thinking about making an ice wine. In 1988, nobody make ice wine in New York. Mm -hmm. uh, neither in Canada. In Canada, they mm -hmm. started after that. Yeah, in the early 90s. Yeah. And uh, so I I uh, I came and thought, okay, I said now I'm ready to to pick the grapes. I so I was happy to make a lake harvest recently. <laughs> Legend is that ice wine originated in German Germany when a um, an abbot or a, a monastery uh, left their grapes on, uh, and unfortunately there was an early freeze, and so they 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 harvested them after they had frozen, and they made the first ice wine. It was just an accident, a freak of nature, so to speak. And once they tried it, um, they liked it. As a winemaker, you're always looking for those opportunities. Uh, to see how the, the weather and the conditions and the grapes that you have, to take the, 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 the chance to do this type of a, a product that is rare. It's rare all over the world. There are very few places in the world that can make ice wine. Areas in North America picked up on the concept uh, and experiments as Cesar's looks like it was the first in, in the late 80s. Um, and now there's a whole area of New York State and the, uh, the ca uh, Canadian Peninsula south of Lake Erie called the Niagara Escarpment, I think it's called, where a lot of ice wine is made. And, and the, the grape used principally is Vidal Blanc. And the second most popular grape is Riesling. We had the Riesling, so we decided to try it too. It's not only a challenge to grow the grapes, it's also a challenge to make the good wines. Because you can also, a lot of things can go wrong. It doesn't mean that you have the grapes that you already, or automatically you have, you're going to have a good ice wine. That uh, It takes a lot of different tricks of the tray that you, you, you learn through conversation with other winemakers and learning from, from other people. One of those? Yeah. And these and renewal canes, we probably the cut, they, they cut back the renewal to here right? and yeah. here, let's say, and let them grow up again in right. case yeah. this trunk dies. Now, so that one with the gall, yeah. we'd probably cut out that main trunk and take the two renewal sp uh, yeah. spurs and, right. and tie them in. Right. Yeah. Um, depending on whether it survives, it could survive another year with it, yeah. that, that gall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right, right. Yeah, you but leave it another year, but keep keep it Keep the renewal canes. Maybe you, maybe you leave leave the, the two trunks. Uh, oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I would leave the, uh, don't uh, don't the renewal canes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd leave those longer. Yeah. 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 Early on, the netting is uh, just to keep birds off the grapes and fermenting the grapes. And then after killing frost, and this, this year the first black frost, I'm going to call it, when the leaves turn brown and begin to fall off, was November 6th. About midweek the following week, I came by, these vines were netted, okay? I just opened up the netting, let the leaves fall off, and then tightened the netting to catch any grapes that would fall between November 6th and harvest, and today's uh, December 12th. So it's been, you know, five weeks. 
from the time you make the wine until you uh, can drink it is about uh, a year and a half to two years. An ice wine bottle is a half size bottle, so instead of, uh, of 28 fluid ounces, it'll be more like 14. And generally, the prices that they, uh, they, they garner is in the 30s, so it'd be the equivalent of a, a $60 regular bottle of wine. And it's part of the production cost, think about it. Uh, it's, a, it's a special wine. Uh, so you don't need a lot of quantity. What you want is quality. If you taste the berry, you get a sense of uh, not only a high sugar content, which is surely there, but a, a complexity. Um, part of it is possibly botrytis, which is a, 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 an, a, an infection, a fungal infection, that begins to, uh, to break down some of the structures inside the grape. But you also get um, a richer complexity of flavor uh, that you associate, I suppose, with a late harvest wine, that's the beginning of it, but the ice wine takes it a step further because it's going to eliminate that much more water. The concept behind an ice wine is that you press it when there's ice crystals that are water crystals that are frozen, they will not press out. They'll stay in, in the press basket. Instead, you get this nectar in essence, it's, uh, and you're going to get this complex flavor. The ice remain in the press. Normally, you get 170 gallons per one ton of grapes. Here, we get 45 50 uh, gallons per one ton. So it's really uh, a very, very uh, uh, limited, uh, the amount of juice that you're gonna get. But uh, the, what you get is the concentration of those flavors, the, the, the flavors of the, uh, uh, the aromas, the acid, the organic acid that you have in the grapes, it got concentrated, and the sugar, of the grape concentrate, so all of those become the essence of the of, of the wine, and uh, that was called the nectar of the god. Have you ever had an ice wine? What it it, it kind of it, it, it explodes in your palate. You take a tiny sip, the tiniest sip, and it, it's all over your mouth. There's a, a, a panoply of different varieties that you can get out of the same grape. I mean, if you think about it, I, I've identified three or four varieties that we can use the same grape. We can have an early harvest for sparkling. We can have a, a still wine. We can have a late harvest, and now we can have an ice wine. Well, Cesar is, uh, is open, and it depends on the, the terroir. It depends on the season. It depends on a lot of factors, and he's going to think about the weather, he's going to think about uh, how the vines look, how the fruit looks, and he's going to experiment. And generally speaking, uh, well, my experience has been that the wines he's made from these grapes uh, has been superb, so I just look forward to an, uh, trying a, another, another Cesar creation here. <laughs>